Yeah, so another question. Um, pop psychology, which is what the personal development field is often referred to, as compared to tradition, traditional psychology therapy has often attracted a lot of scepticism. Um, regarding these changes from the seminar attendees last very long, what does this study highlight in that regard? Yeah, I think, um, you know, obviously the words pop psychology compared, you know, when we talk about NLP and, and the likes of Anthony Robbins and, and, and leaders such as 20th century in this industry, is that the traditional therapy uh, and psychology is very much a one-on-one -on -one based consulting, lay down on a couch and uh, be asked questions. And, and not to criticise that, that had, it has had some results uh, for people in, in different types of therapies have great results than others. I think this industry, and I was asking this question recently, um, imagine the world if there was never ever a personal development industry started. And I think if we looked at the, to see what is the real value of personal development and real life education, how much the world would be uh, uh, worse off without people having been motivated, inspired and driven to perform, whether it's athletes, entrepreneurs, CEOs, uh, government political leaders in the world that uh, contribute a lot of their success or inspiration back to uh, the personal development industry, whether it was just reading a book or attending a seminar. Um, and um, so uh, there is criticisms of, the, of, of that type of pop psychology, but it, it's all about accelerated change and, and what's possible in using this type of education with neuro-linguistic programming, etc., is that we can accelerate the change on mass as opposed to traditional therapy or psychology often took a very long process to create a change and then still required uh, the individual to be dependent on continuing to see uh, the therapist to sustain that change. Um, so this can be criticisms of any type of therapy, uh, but I think this will show uh, that there's a way to accelerate uh, the change in human behaviour. And, and just, just to add to that, Jamie, I think it's, in, it's important that, that your colleagues and, and fellow sort of peers follow your footsteps in, in regards to allowing scientists or independent research bodies to come in and place your material, your seminars, under the microscope. Um, we live in societies that you know are very happy trigger with statistics, whether it's in a social setting, you know, the, the medical world, educational institutes, workplaces. So if you're delivering something as substantial as educational services, which is mammoth, it's huge, it should be evaluated in a proper scientific way. And I'm glad you've taken the first steps, and I hope your colleagues do the same. Yeah, I agree. I think it would only improve the industry in a great, uh, in a great way um, to have more studies done. And, and I also, I think it assists a lot of people that are maybe considering the value of getting additional education to school and university, that there is scientific backing uh, and studies done that support the improvement of the quality of life as a result of taking action with that. Is, is there any other questions? How representative is your sample? Can the results be generalised? I, I think that's a science question, mate. So I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> that, that's a very good question. Um, this is not a population-based study. So to, to begin with, it's, it's a pilot study. And what we did was we were inviting people that attended the seminar, so the attendees, and I think there was approximately four or 500 people that attended that particular seminar in Melbourne and of which we were able to capture a quarter. But of those that we asked, there was a positive response rate of at least 65 to 70%. And being one of the interviewers and one of the people that was sort of administering the questionnaires, I do know that there was a lot of positive feedback from the attendees being very excited that their results and the impact of the seminar were measured scientifically. So is it representative of the general population? No, but we didn't set out to do that. It's a pilot study. Is it representative of the demographic or the attendees or the cohort of the four-day seminar? Absolutely. Um, but when we take the next step, obviously we'll be uh, tackling it with a much larger sort of scale, with bigger resources, bigger budgets and so on. And I think it's a good point. I think the, you know, the participants that were there are actually uh, as uh, Dr. Moderani said, is that we're quite positive and actually quite open to one being evaluated and seeing the uh, change if it's uh, sustainable over a period of time and, and the benefits they can get from that. So uh, that w was great from a participant's point of view as well because ultimately everyone wants to uh, get as maximum value as they can um, from developing their education. I think education is the key to success. Uh, I'm a big believer in education, that's what's led to my success and many others, is uh, the education we tend to get after we leave school or university.
Yeah, and um, so what's to come after this study? I can, I, I can start there, so we're both very eager to answer that question at the same time. Well, I, I've got certain requests. Um, I think that um, there should be a larger cohort, so we'll be tackling bigger seminars. I think that the uh, questionnaire itself should be uh, validated, so the sensitivity and specificity should be assessed of the items that are, that are contained in the questionnaire. Um, there should also be uh, collaborations with, with other sort of organizations or companies and so on. So it's really just assessing what were the weaknesses in this pilot study, how can we improve it, and how can we present this in a bigger and better way. Um, to give us more representative sort of sam uh, sample statistics as well. So that's what I'm looking forward to. And also, just before I hand it over to Jamie, um, when we do remodel or assess the, the items that we've used in the pilot study, you know, we should be you know, looking more into behavioral set sort of questions. So just to put a, a greater emphasis on the psychology-like items. Yeah, and I think what we'll also um, request in, in future studies to expand, obviously, the questions. Uh, a lot of people, obviously, uh, are wanting to get a financial education, particularly achieve financial results. But from what a lot of participants find out is that uh, they get a lot more than that from a, attending 21st century education events, and such as quality of life improvement, even um, uh, you know, the statistics for, for uh, journalists and media organisations and the general public we will be uh, making uh, the, the study available uh, and be able to be downloaded and as a result uh, we'll be transparent the study is available for everyone to, to go through in detail. Um, but I think there's uh, the, the opportunity for um, people to, to certainly learn a lot more. Also as a 21st century education provider we often talk about uh, it's an education taught by those with a PhD in results versus theory, where traditional university education and school is often taught by those with a PhD in theory. It's not to be critical of traditional education, they both have value. I think if people want to be successful in today's modern world, uh, we simply need more than just a traditional education. I think that's the point we're making. But as an educational organisation, we look uh, forward to working with major universities it's already started in, in looking at uh, how we can work together because a lot of leading universities are wanting uh, results, practical based education, especially MBAs and things like that. And also students are demanding that. They want more real life type education tied in with their accredited uh, certified type education um, so they're better suited when they enter the workforce. And, you know, and the companies around the world in Australia and worldwide also want better education taught at school and university so when people arrive at, into their, their employer uh, they don't have to be retrained continually. Most education is taught by the employers in this in this world, when most of that education should actually fall back on the education system. But to do that, it has to be delivered more practically and more by results-driven uh, focus, because the world, when people start work, demands results uh, when they go to work. Um, so that I think that is critical, and, and more scientific studies can only help uh, universities and colleges realise uh, there's measurable impact of providing this type of education in conjunction with traditional type of education. So I'll just remind Jamie that we're at a press conference and not one of your seminars, <laughs> but if you want to hear the rest of that, it gets very passionate, it goes on for hours and it's all very valuable information. The, the, the last sort of point that I wanted to address with the uh, last question is that it's very impressive, this study. I mean, although it was a small sample size, 100 or 150 or so, they were followed over, you know, the completion of the seminar 60 days after. So with the bigger and, and, and larger sort of studies, of course, we'll do greater length follow-up uh, uh, assessments. So we'll be administering the questionnaire at different time points that sort of extend further than the 60 days. So treat this as a teaser. Enjoy the paper. It's a scientific paper that will be released. I'll want Jamie to sort of announce that. And uh, also just consider it like a, a trailer to a movie. So it's a bit of a teaser that will develop into something much bigger, particularly with the support of 21st century education and other similar organisations and companies. Well, thank you for, for your time, Dr. Mo Durrani. Uh, those who, uh, if there's no further questions, as I said, uh, we'll be uh, making this scientific study available for a free download to, to any members of the public or, or media. Uh, so it's fully transparent. You can go through it and study the statistics of the actual pilot study for those who, who have further interest in that. Um, thank you for your questions. Thank you.